Hello friends, Dan here again. Now today I thought we'd have a quick look at the latest version of MorphOS, version 3.6. And it actually includes quite a few nice little features actually. Um, it's quite a significant upgrade. And the last version of MorphOS I think I covered on this channel was version 3.0. Now I had a lot of people asking me to cover um, successive releases, but really, I mean, they've just kind of been bug fixes and slight improvements. But there are some quite big changes. Uh, to version 3.6 so I thought this kind of warranted making a little video showing a few of the uh, nice new features and changes in um, number 3.6. Uh, now for those of you not familiar with Morph OS I've done more in-depth videos on it before but basically it's an Amiga-like operating system that runs on a variety of PowerPC platforms and I will stress I did say Amiga-like not Amiga because there will be people that will comment going eh, it's not an Amiga you know, I'm not stupid enough to think that running Morph OS on a PowerPC Mac is in any way, shape or form an Amiga. Uh, but the operating system did start its life on the Amiga platform back in the mid-90s. And the reason it was designed is um, to be a successor to the classic Amiga Workbench operating system um, at a time before, you know, Amiga OS 4 and um, products like that were even conceived. Uh, a group of third-party developers got together and made an operating system that was really inspired by the ethos and design of the... Um, Amiga operating system back in the early 90s and it kind of retains a lot of that inheritance from the Amiga you know it's got a lot of the same kind of idealisms and also it's um, it's based on the Amiga Workbench 3.1 um, APIs it's fully API compatible it's got stuff like magic user interface and it will run um, applications designed for the Commodore Amiga system out of the box um, using transparent just-in-time 68k emulation so um, it's as Amiga-like as they come, put it that way. So in version 3.6, when we boot up, we get dropped into the ambient desktop here. Now, the biggest change in this edition, if I reach down to the floor, is that I no longer need this plugged in. Now, before, Morph OS did have some limited Wi-Fi support. Um, it was for a few specific chipsets. And if you were to use it, for example, on a... PowerPC Mac laptop before you needed a PCM CIA uh, Wi-Fi adapter plugged in. Now, as you can see at the top of my screen there, in the taskbar, I've actually got a little Wi-Fi icon. So if I click that, it will show me my nearby wireless local area network, so I can go into the network settings. Um, and there we are. So literally, it's now got support for the internal airport on supported PowerPC Macs which is really cool. I mean, it frees up an Ethernet cable for me to use on another device. And um, to be fair, I did have a few issues. There is a little bug that's kind of plagued me um, due to my configuration. Um, there is a little bug on the SunGem Ethernet device that now and then caused um, a little bit of stuttering and lag on, um, on network connections. It's been reported for years, but it only affected a few users. Luckily, I'm happy to, happy to report that now I've gone to wireless. I'm not affected by that at all. And network performance is very stable and very quick for me. So... Really happy with that. Wi-Fi is, you know, really big advancement and something they've been working on for ages. Particularly if you're going to use it on an iBook or a PowerBook laptop, because now it means, you know, having a laptop that's tethered to an Ethernet cable is, uh, you know, kind of defeats the object of it, really. But now it's fully fully Wi-Fi compatible, so that's a nice big step. And if we look through the change log here, there's been a few other things as well. For example, the um, there's API library support for HID joysticks and um, a few of the sensors inside these machines as well. Uh, a lot of bug fixes in there too that I won't really go all that in depth with. Um, but also there's a few new uh, graphic enhancements as well. Support for the R400 card, uh, fan control for the Radeon X800 and 9800 XT as well. And uh, a few of the big things that have now been implemented are ways to interact with other machines. Um, so, for example, the Odyssey web browser, that, as I showed you a second ago. If you're not familiar with Odyssey, this is um, a WebKit-based browser, just like Safari on the Mac or uh, Google Chrome or Chromium. And uh, the newest version, version 3.6, um, version 1.24, rather, comes with um, MorphOS 3.6. So that got a nice little update with the operating system. Now, one thing that's actually included now with MorphOS, if we go into the applications directory we've now got Synergy client so if you're not familiar with Synergy I've got it open here what it allows you to do is remotely control a, another co computer on your network using one mouse and keyboard and also being able to perform operations such as copy and paste and that kind of thing between different machines so 
I'm going to have to kind of move around a little bit to show you this. But if I take you over to my Windows PC here, so I've closed down my uh, release notes there, and here I've got a Synergy client open. So all you have to do is get a Synergy server running on uh, one of your machines, and they do servers for um, Windows 32-bit and 64-bit, um, OS 10, and various distributions of Linux as well. So all you do is you set one up on here, you get your IP address and click on um, Start the Service. Then you go over to your MorphOS machine, and I've got the uh, Synergy client open on here. Put in the IP address and then click on Connect. So we've now got the little um, green light, and if I go back to my PC, it says in the client there, um, Client MorphOS has been connected. So what that means is, <laughs> I'm going to try and get this in on a one continuous shot. If I see my mouse is moving around on the Windows desktop, I'm highlighting the stuff in my dock at the top, dragging around Windows, and if I move over to the right of the screen, the mouse pointer will go off the screen, and it will appear on my MorphOS ambient desktop. So I'm using the mouse on my PC here, and I can control my MorphOS machine. Which is quite useful, particularly if you haven't got a lot of space and you want to kind of, you know, use one mouse and keyboard rather than having two set up. So I can open a, you know, shell, do a bit of typing on the PC keyboard here. And then um, I could even highlight that, copy it. Then we'll go back over to the, the PC. I can go in there and I can place that in. So that is, you know, probably the most useful feature for me, being able to um, copy and paste text and um, transfer commands between the two machines. So that is, you know, it's a very welcome feature. Very straightforward, very simple, but you know, it's um, it's quite a powerful function to be now built into the operating system. So we'll uh, just quickly stop Synergy on both machines and I'll demo something else that's been included. So back over to MorphOS. There is also a VNC server that's now bundled with the operating system. So again, we'll uh, go over here, back to the PC. And I will open up a VNC viewer on here. So um, I think I've got one called Type VNC that was already loaded up. Uh, bear with me a moment. I may have to launch it again. There we go, Type VNC viewer. And you put in the IP address of the machine you want to connect to, and the server is already running on my MorphOS machine. So I'll click on Connect, and then if I go back to MorphOS, you can see it says an incoming connection. I click on Accept. We go back over here, and there is my MorphOS Ambient Desktop. So obviously VNC is not the quickest protocol in the world, so moving things around. Um, it can take a few seconds for it to redraw the screen and everything. Um, probably not all that handy if you're sitting next to the machine as I am, but you know if you want to remote control your um, MorphOS setup, if you're at work and you want to access things on it, then it's actually quite useful for doing that. And um, allowing people maybe to have a little play with MorphOS who haven't before, so that's one nice new little feature that's included in the operating system. Very handy to have, so we'll uh, quickly shut that down as well. Now there is a, another networking tool that's now included with MorphOS, um, and that is now, it now supports SMBFS, which um, basically means that you can mount remote volumes on your MorphOS machine. Now it is kind of all command line based at the moment, and my network here is set up in kind of a strange way. Um, I've got kind of a combination of wireless and um, an Ethernet bridge and home plugs as well. So it doesn't mean that various machines don't always work that well together um, over the network. You know, there is a few ports and things that need opening on my router. So at the moment, it's nothing I've actually managed to uh, set up. I haven't really played around all that much with SMB just yet. Um, but I do know that there are some users on the, uh, the forums who've had a bit of joy with it and basically it allows you to mount your uh, Windows drives um, on your ambient desktop there and be able to drag and drop files to and from each machine, so uh, it's a really useful feature to have, but I think it basically needs a little bit more investigation um, than I have at this point. So as you can see there, it's new SMBFS, and uh, it's basically a command line command that you'll find in the C directory of your MorphOS install now. 
So really, that's a few of the um, the big new features that are included in uh, Morph OS version 3.6. I did want to show you a really neat new application that I found as well. So if you go into uh, my audio applications here. Now, if you've watched my videos previously, you may know that I do have a lot of experience in um, DJing. Um, I used to DJ in clubs for many years. And back when I did it, it was all based on, you know, vinyl and CD. But there is now a kind of experimental DJ suite for Morph OS. It's called Sandbankster. And it's kind of cool. Now, it is an early version. This is version 1.0 that I'm running here. And uh, there is still, you know, a few bugs that need ironing out. And uh, the big limitation for using it on a Mac Mini like I do is the fact that it does support two audio outputs, but you do need um, either a Mac with a sound card and also the internal audio as well. That would let you, any, anyone that knows anything about DJing will know that you basically need an output that's being played to the crowd and also one that you can have in your earphones to do beat mixing. So unfortunately, my Mac's only got one um, one audio output that just kind of limit out, you know, beat mixing. I'm not able to do that on my system. So, but I can kind of give you a little demo of how how smooth this this program runs. So if we check out my uh, work drive here in audio, um, two tracks there. So you select the songs that you want to play in the software, and then we've got the uh, two virtual decks at the top here. And in the middle, you've got your EQ, you know, your highs, mids, and lows. So if I double click that song, um, misclick there, sorry, and it will load it into deck A, and we get a waveform display along the middle here. And I can then click on play, and you'll see it will give me a waveform in the middle uh, while the track is playing. I need to turn it up on here. Excuse my alarm on my phone. Um, so if I was to turn that up, you should be able to hear the uh, deck A playing. There we go. As I said, it's a bit experimental. I'm still kind of learning it. But we can do the highs, turn them up and down. And the mids. A bit more bass. And we've got a crossfader here as well. And it all, is all very responsive too. So if we load this track into, double click that one, it'll load it into deck B here. And we have a pitch slider here as well, so that slows it down. And that speeds it up. Now I'm not going to attempt to do any beat mixing here because, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I've got no way of queuing it or previewing it. But I can click play on that one um, once the waveform's all loaded in. And you can then basically go between uh, the two songs that you've got queued up here. So I can move that around with this decide where I want to click play from. Then I can click play on this deck, for example. There we go, that's that track. So you could do like a seg between them. It's going to sound like horses galloping now because, um, yeah, I've got no way of uh, previewing it in my headphones to beat mix it. Although there is a sync button here, but I haven't been able to uh, get that to work yet. But, you know, as I said, it is kind of experimental. And there are a few bugs in it and stuff, for example, if I um, click Q on here, then it won't resume playing anymore for some reason. I've got to reload the track again. So there are still some you know, definite bugs in it, but I think this is definitely a really interesting work in progress. You know, to have like a fully featured DJ, a piece of DJ software on Morph OS is something that's really cool. And also it uses some of the new APIs in Morph OS version 3.6, and it can actually interact with um, USB based DJ controllers as well. So rather than using the mouse and keyboard like I was then, um, you could actually have um, just a you know little DJ controller and uh, do it all via USB. And apparently the latency is really good. You know it's um, really responsive using that as well, according to reports I've read. So that software is called Soundbankster. I'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, a few bugs in the early release, but you know yeah, really nice work from the team there. So there we go. That's been a little look at Morph OS version 3.6. Any questions? Leave them in the comments below. And, uh, of course, join us on Facebook. The Facebook group is facebook.com forward slash kookytech. And check out the blog at kookytech.net. And I will catch you in the next video.